Amen. So we are in this series right now on Sunday School Stories. We started two weeks ago, Pastor Carson um, shared some Old Testament stories. It's the story of Adam and Eve and the story of Cain and Abel. Those were from the book of Genesis in the Old Testament. And today we're going to take a little bit of a shift, if you will. We're going to move into the New Testament. Um, we're going to look at the story of Zacchaeus. Now, if you grew up in Sunday school, you might have heard this song. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in, I see it, sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Okay, so some of you remember it. Some of you know the story of Zacchaeus. And I have to admit to you, that song is basically all I remember about the story of Zacchaeus. There's something about music that helps us to remember. So that's what I remember about Zacchaeus, but there's so much more to the story of Zacchaeus. Today we're going to look at the story, we're going to look at Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus. He had an encounter with Jesus, and we're going to look at it today. Um, it comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. So we're going to hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. If you have a Bible, feel free to read along, or the words uh, for this scripture will also be up on the screen. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town. A man there named Zacchaeus, a ruler among the rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to that spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay in your home today. So Zacchaeus came down at once, happy to welcome Jesus. Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I repay them four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this household, because he too is a son of Abraham. The human one came to seek and save the lost. Oh God, we ask that you open the eyes of our hearts today, that we may truly see you, and that in turn we might see others. Open us to the transforming power of your spirit. Amen. Just looking, thank you. How many of you have ever said that when you were shopping? Those are words that we might say whenever a salesperson comes up to us when we're shopping. See if they can help us. We might say to them, mm, no thank you, just looking. We'd say those words to keep that salesperson at a safe distance. Just looking. We're interested, but we're not really willing to commit. <laughs> we might be curious about something that's there, but we don't want that person to pressure us into buying something. How many of you can relate to that? <laughs> Just looking. Thanks. 
Zacchaeus was curious that day that Jesus came to Jericho. The crowd was big, and he was small. And so he shimmied his way up this sycamore tree. It was the perfect solution for him. He was high above the noisy crowd. He could get a glimpse of Jesus from a safe distance. And besides, let's admit it, Zacchaeus didn't really have a whole lot of friends in that crowd. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. He was the lead tax collector from the Roman government in this prosperous town of Jericho. So his position as the chief tax collector may have made him the most hated person in all of that town of Jericho. He worked for the Roman government. He worked for the occupying forces, those forces that were putting pressure and coming into their place. So he was also considered a traitor to the people in Jericho. And even more than that, he made money off of his neighbors. It was part of this full of corruption. He was obliged to send in only what the, the Roman government required. And so anything else that he charged on top of that, he was able to keep for himself. And scripture tells us, we heard it today, that he was rich. That really wasn't a description of who he was. It was more of an indictment. <laughs> he was rich. So who in that crowd really would have made room for him anyway? Who would want to be seen with him? And then the day comes. Jesus comes along. Word has spread about Jesus. And Zacchaeus is one of many people in Jericho who want to see him. But I wonder, I wonder this about Zacchaeus. What does Zacchaeus expect? to see. Do you think he would like what he saw in Jesus? Or maybe not. On one hand, maybe he has heard that Jesus is known for sitting down and having meals with people like tax collectors and sinners. Maybe he's heard that in some of Jesus' stories, it's the tax collector who is the hero <laughs> and the Pharisee who is held up for being rude or being a fool. Maybe he's, he's even heard that a man named Matthew, who was also a tax collector, is now one of Jesus' followers. On the other hand, maybe Zacchaeus has heard that Jesus told the rich man that he had to sell everything that he had and give it to the poor in order to follow him. Or maybe he's heard Jesus' statement that it's easier for a camel, a huge camel, to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. After all, Matthew, the disciple, had to leave his tax collector's booth in order to follow Jesus. So maybe the most that we can say with any confidence about Zacchaeus is that he was curious. Zacchaeus was curious. He wants to see Jesus, but hmm, he might not want to actually meet him. He doesn't want to touch him or be touched by him. He certainly doesn't want to come to him for healing. He wants to observe from a safe distance. Zacchaeus thinks that he's safe up there in the tree where he can watch, where no one will confuse him with the people who are cheering in the crowd, where no one needs to know just where he stands on an issue, where he can't touch and where he can't be touched, where he's safe to say, hmm, just looking, thank you. If anyone actually were to spy on him and see him 
up in the tree. Just looking. <laughs> Just looking. Thank you. And suddenly, this strange little man seems more familiar to all of us. Don't we all have times when it is easier to stay in our tree, to watch all of the events of the world as a spectator, rather than actually come down and get involved? Rather than come amongst the crowd, come amongst all of the dirt and the noise and the needs and all of the confusion and put one foot in front of the other and follow Jesus. Isn't it easier sometimes to say, just looking, when we are asked to help or when we're asked to give or asked to get involved? Now, there's a different sermon for those among us who really do try to do everything. It's those among us who need to learn to say no, who need to take some Sabbath time. But for others of us, is it time for us to get involved? Is it time to stop being a spectator and join in on the action Maybe it's time for you to take on some ministry in the church. As Brendan said, we need people who are willing to be leaders. You have an idea? Come and be a leader of a ministry within the church. Maybe it's time for you to come and to help with community meals or to be a greeter on Sunday mornings. We need greeters at every door of this church. We've got lots of doors in this church. We need greeters. Maybe... It's time for you to step up and be a volunteer and help Scott with tech as he runs the tech for both of our services. Or maybe to be the hands and feet of God at the upcoming Habitat event or the Lakewood Arts Festival. Maybe it's time to get out and vote on August 8th <laughs> or say yes to God and serve. Sometimes getting involved in church takes a leap of faith. Now, church shopping, some of you may have heard this term before, church shopping isn't a bad thing. Many of us shopped our way into being United Methodists, shopped our way into the United Methodist Church, maybe shopped our way even into being a part of this church here at Lakewood United Methodist Church. And yes, it's important for us to go and to look around, to explore different faith communities, to find a place where we can worship and grow and participate and serve and feel safe. That's important. Be at home, and yet to be challenged, too. Sometimes there is a danger that we don't ever come down out of the tree and we say, okay, this is it. Here I am. I'm going to get involved. Or if we think about our own individual, our individual lives of faith, we want to see Jesus. Yes, that's a good thing. But do we keep Jesus at arm's length? Do we ponder him from a distance? rather than come and meet him, come to know him, to love him, to serve him, or be changed by him? Do we look at him from a distance rather than grow more and more into his image and likeness, rather than discovering meaning for our lives through a deep relationship with him? empowered by prayer, nurtured by participation in the faith community, nourished by sacraments, which we will celebrate today. That day, Jesus looks up into the tree in Jericho, and he sees this little man clinging to a tree branch, and he commands him to hurry down because Jesus needs him. Jesus needs him. 
Jesus needs his hospitality. Jesus needs his welcome. Jesus needs his company. Jesus comes and he plucks him right out of the tree. And Zacchaeus has this encounter with Jesus. He's changed. He's there. He's ready to welcome him. Zacchaeus could have said no. Honestly, it probably would have caused Zacchaeus less if he had said no. It would have attracted less attention. It would have prevented the townspeople from having one more reason to grumble about something that Zacchaeus did. We all know that it may be easier for us to go on with our own lives and continue our own preoccupation with ourselves. Our preoccupation with our own agendas rather than allow the Messiah himself to invite himself over to lunch and allow him to delve right into our truest selves. It might be easier to say, <laughs> just looking, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking. But if we're honest, we might know from experience that it really is not easier to go on with our own preoccupations or to take care of our own worries on our own. If we're honest, we know that there's actually this tremendous ease or grace in just letting go of all of those burdens that we carry and letting go and giving ourselves over to Christ and letting Christ set our agendas. It really is easier to stop scrambling up a tree and allow ourselves to know the one who knows us completely and who still loves us in the midst. Like Zacchaeus, we can take a chance. We can invite Jesus in. We can watch the radical realigning of our lives. Zacchaeus' life changed greatly. Something in this encounter that he had with Jesus changed the way Zacchaeus looked at the world. Now he could see people in need when before he only saw people that he could use. <laughs> he now saw people in need when he only saw people he could use. That's part of what happens when we come down out of those safe places in the tree and we allow Jesus to touch us. Before, we might have really just been looking. But now, Jesus enables us to really see. Now, we're able to see real people with real needs. We see real opportunities to get involved. We see true beauty in other people. We see this astonishing array of gifts that God has to given, given to us and given to other people within our community. Salvation comes to Zacchaeus' home, and he is forever changed from being a taker to being a giver. He is forever changed. Zacchaeus isn't unique. We see it over and over again. When Jesus finds a home with us, when Jesus finds a home with us, the result is a more generous, a more gracious heart. Giving becomes a joy, not a burden. What's given might be our money. It might be our talents. It might be our time. Maybe it's some special ability that we have that we can share with the community. But time and time again, when Jesus plucks us out 
of our proverbial trees, when Jesus does that for us, we ripen into givers, not takers. We ripen into workers, not watchers. We ripen into people who serve, not observe. Jesus isn't just coming into our town. Jesus is already here. And he may be looking up at you. At you. Inviting you out of some safe perch, probably a lonely perch, inviting you out of a safe but lonely perch and into true community and the kingdom of God. Jesus is inviting each of us today. He invites us into a relationship with him. A relationship not where we're saying, up, oh, just looking. But he invites us to invite him into our hearts. Where we can know him and be changed by him. Jesus invites us today. And today we celebrate the sacrament of communion where we remember Jesus, where we remember the work that Christ has done on our behalf, where we remember the acts of salvation that have happened throughout the course of history and time, and where we remember Jesus and his ministry, where Jesus shared a meal with his disciples before his death, that meal where he took a simple loaf of bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And he said, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat this, do this to remember me. And when they were done eating supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks to God for it. And he said, drink from this. All of you, this is my blood of a new covenant that's poured out for you and for all people, for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do eat and drink this often to remember me. Let us pray.